Hi everyone, it's J.R. Monks again. I want to wish you a good morning and today I want to show you one of my Sky Challenge pieces. The, the piece in front of us here is going to be today's submission for my 100 Watercolor Sky Challenge that is on my Facebook page. But more importantly, today I want to talk to you about when we do a watercolor most of the time, if not all of the time, our initial vision isn't realized in the first washes. And true to form, in this particular piece, I'm happy with the sky, I'm happy with the shapes of the landscape, but I'm not happy with the value contrast between the tree line, the sky, and the distant mountains. When you squint down, those values are fairly close, and while I'm concerned about in nature that tree line would be much darker just the way we naturally see things, I'm more concerned from a design standpoint that there's not enough contrast to add that interest and impact that we would see if I add some darker value to the tree line to play against the lighter value of the sky and maybe link a little better to that distant mountain. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay in some darks and maybe work a little bit of edges in those trees to add interest to the lower left portion of the painting. And when we do that, I think you'll see that it, overall it makes this painting more dramatic, more interesting, and more successful in the end. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at adding a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, quinacridone gold, or raw sienna, depending on what you have on your palette. I like these colors to, to punch up the darks in the trees. Although there's countless numbers of varieties of combinations of paint that would work in this, in this instance. But again, what I'm going to try is burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and a touch of quinacridone gold. And I think that's going to give me the punch and the dark I'm looking for. Let's talk a little bit about the consistency of paint and the amount of moisture in the brush when I go to rework an area such as this. I don't want the paint to be sloppy wet. I don't want it running all over the place. So I'm going to control the moisture in that brush with a paper towel. And I'm going to, after I mix my mixture, I'm going to barely touch that brush to the paper towel to take out excess moisture. And when I come back into trees like this, I am going to stay true to what I have originally put in place there but I'm going to lay in the trunk in a few places, not all the way down. And then I'm going to use the side of the brush to come in and add some darks over the top of those lights. It's important that I do leave some light behind these darks. When I leave the light behind the darks, it says forest, and it says there's trees behind this tree, although this tree stands out in the front. I want to vary my mix, perhaps add a little more of the yellow or the burnt sienna or the blue. I don't want to keep it the same all the way through. I also want to be careful that I don't have a, a line that is perfect. I want to add variety and interest in my lines no matter where they happen to be. And you see me thinking hovering above the, the paper before I make a mark with the brush. I don't want to commit until I'm fairly certain what it is I'm going to do. I'm going to add considerably more blue to this next mix and this will help the, the next tree be further in the distance. Even though it's going to be a fairly tall tree, I'm 
this one is going to appear to be further away from us because the value is going to be lighter. Again, I'm careful to leave some of the original wash. And in general, I like to paint pine trees and conifers darker, warmer at the base, lighter, cooler towards the top of the tree. Because I don't want the trees to necessarily be the subject of this painting, I might want to come in and simplify part of this background. And I'm going to do that with a, with a light wash of water. Going back over these areas that are already in place. But I'm going to use a wet into wet technique to reduce some of the contrast and some of the edges that are currently in place. So wet into wet, I'm going to come in and establish and take away some of the busyness but at the same time increase the value I'm going to dry my brush and I'm going to drag the mostly dry brush up towards the sky seeking some variety of edge and so that's basically where I'm going to leave it uh, after all I do want this to be about the sky but I did want to come back in and indicate like I say, darker values in this tree line to play against the sky. And I feel if you play this video back and look at what it originally looked like, you'll see that this darker tree line gives us way more interest against that sky and acts as a dramatic foil and gives us something else to look at in the piece. So thank you once again for watching. I hope you appreciated this. I hope this gives you some ideas for your own paintings, how you can reevaluate, adjust value, and be cognizant of shape and edges. And until next time, thanks for taking the journey with me, and have a great day. So there is the finished piece with the darker tree line against the sky. It links better with the mountains to the right. It's more simplified in shape and edges, except up along the skyline to bring your eye over to the clouds and hopefully allow you to wander in and out of those blues and mauves of the sky.